Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tober. Welcome to Corn School. Today we're going to talk about moisture. We're going to talk about rain and how much rain we need to make a corn crop. That's a question I put to agrarist agronomist Dale Cowan. I said, Dale, how much do we need throughout the season? When's the critical time? And can we make it rain? Can we manage our soils? Can we manage our crops to make sure we have moisture throughout the season? Here's what he had to say. So Dale, let's talk about this crop. We're in a beautiful looking corn crop here. Um, we're at six, seven leaves. How much moisture or rain has it taken us to get to here? Well, at this growth stage, it was roughly, it's been at least four inches of rain, maybe even closer to five. And that's a combination of, of not just rain, but that's uh, stored soil moisture as well. And so the roots are, are picking up moisture here as well, which is pretty critical to a corn crop, considering a, a pretty high yielding corn crop would consume awfully close to 25 inches of water uh, per acre per year. So it's, it's quite substantial. And uh, right now, when plants are relatively small, of course, they're transpiring less water. But as we get bigger and more plant mass, we're going to need more water. And especially when we get into uh, the tassel stage. So by tassel stage, the plant will have consumed or was hopefully looking for at least 10 inches of water. So the remaining 15 is going to be required uh, during the reproductive stage. And it always amazes me that even at dent, just prior to black layer, we're still looking at... Uh, you know, 0.18 to 0.2 inches of water break every day, even though we're almost finished the crop at that point. So the water use goes right up to black layer. Yeah. Talk about different stages of the year and, and crop development. Dale, where exactly do we need rain timely through the year? Obviously to determine yield and deliver yield. Well, certainly uh, planting into moisture, we always hear that. So we definitely want to get enough moisture to germinate. And then uh, the most critical phase is, is as we're in that uh, V6, V7, we're starting to initiate some yield. We don't want a lot of stress at that point. And then during the vegetative period, we certainly don't want to be stressing the plant, although it's not overly critical until we actually start to get into that tasseling, silking stage. Then that is absolutely critical that we're not uh, running out of moisture at, at that reproductive stage. And that's when the bulk almost 10 inches of the water required is going to be in an R1 to uh, R5 growth stage just to begin a dent. So that's a, that's a very critical time for water usage in a corn plant. Dale, final point here, and obviously it goes, comes back to management. Obviously we can wait for rain, uh, we, can, we can have snow melt, but there's so much more that we can do from a management perspective to, to make it rain, shall we say. You know, what, what do you see growers doing well when it comes to managing their soils to manage moisture? Well, you know, we, we always talk about uh, aspects of soil health. So invariably every year, agronomists will see uh, one field neighborhood that's got the leaves rolled up in July and the other field cross rows perfectly fine. And you start to dig a little deeper and you start to uncover things like more complex rotations. And the more complex the rotation, the less tillage required to make a seed bed. So less drying out of the soil, more residue left on top, reduces evaporation rate, increases infiltration rates, adds organic matter to the soil. And as I said before, every 1% organic matter holds another inch of water. So you, those are the things that you start to see make a difference, especially when it's dry in the summer where we have a moisture deficit. So those are the things that... Uh, that come into play. So those complex rotations where there's a corn, soybean, wheat, and wheat underseeded, or incorporating cover crops in those off seasons to help uh, build some, uh, some soil tilth in there and some soil health, some organic matter. You start to see those things pay dividends when, the mo when you get in some severe moisture deficits during critical times of the year. Another question, Dale, and that is when it comes to leaf rolling and corn leaves um, and the stress there, what are we seeing there? Is there some management changes we need to make when we see that? Well, sometimes it's just plain dry, right? You're just out of moisture. But generally speaking, when, you, when if leaf roll occurs before the reproductive stage, as long as it doesn't exceed 12 hours a day of leaf rolling, it's, it's not a huge impact on yields. It's not something you want to see. It's not fun to look at. But if it starts during the reproductive stage, then we start chipping away at the yield. But I think the yield loss is very much dependent on what is really causing the leaf rolling. Is it just the fact that we're dry? Is there a nutrient deficiency? Did we run out of N? Did we run out of potash? Is there some soil compaction? Has something limited the root expansion so it can't get out into a greater volume of soil? Those are likely the things that cause a greater yield loss in conjunction 
with dry weather. So again, speaking back to this whole uh, management aspect of soil management, fertility management, all these things get layered and stacked on and they all add up to make a tiny little bit of difference as the season goes on. Awesome. Hey, some great insights, Dale. Always um, great to have you on the Corn School. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me.